What's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. <clears throat> so I figured I would shoot a quick video about uh, some field tuners. So I was in the Ham Radio Crash Course Discord earlier. In fact, I'm, I'm still in there right now. And they were having a discussion about uh, the MTech ZM2 and the Elecraft T1. Now, I do not have an Elecraft T1. This light's a little bright. Let me move it a little bit. I don't have an Elecraft T1. Uh, but I do have an ATU-10, which is an auto-tuner. Uh, I do have Elecraft tuners. They just happen to be in Elecraft radios. <laughs> so I thought what I would do is I would shoot a little bit of a video just to kind of show you guys the difference between a Z-Match tuner and an auto-tuner, show you how they tune, uh, talk a little bit about strengths and weaknesses and price and things like that. So we'll start with the the auto-tuner, that's probably the one more people are going to gravitate towards. Uh, they're, they're a little simpler, um, but they do have their drawbacks, but they're generally a little easier to use. So this particular tuner is an ATU-10. I got this from Amazon, from one of DL2 MAN's approved True SDX vendors. You gotta be careful with these because you wanna make sure that whoever builds it, builds it to spec. Um, these are most of these are well, these are all made in China, and you know you get what you pay for, and you kind of got to be careful, right? Caveat emptor. Make sure you're buying from a, a a valid vendor. Like I said, I got this one from from a, a reputable source. I will post a link to this in the description. It'll be an Amazon link. It's not an affiliate link. I don't do Amazon affiliate links or anything like that. I'm not trying to make money by selling things, um, but I'll link this in there because I know this one is a valid builder. It was about 125 bucks. So on the front, you will see we have a tune button. That is also the power button. You've got a little display that will show us our SWR and our power out. You've got a USB type C. That type C is used to charge and is also used for firmware updates. It's USB-C as God intended. There is no stupid micro USB or mini USB on this thing. I don't know why ham radio for some reason loves to use those things still. dude make everything type C and call it a day. This is designed by N7DDC. On the back, we have our coax in from the radio, our coax out, a ground lug, and we have this little EXT jack. Now, the cool thing about this particular tuner is it is designed to interface seamlessly with the ICOM IC705. So when you put that thing in tune mode and you plug a three and a half millimeter cable from the tune jack on the 705 to the jack on the back of this tuner, it tunes automatically as soon as you change band frequency, whatever. It is awesome and it works fantastically. All right, so let me go ahead and hook this up. So we're gonna hook, I'm using my shack antenna. So we've got 50 feet of uh, ABR, what is it, 218 XATC. This is running to a Palomar 9 to 1 and a 71 foot random wire. All right, so that's the antenna we're working with. So I'm going to go ahead and hook that to the out jack on the tuner. I'm going to hook my radio to the in jack on the tuner. You can see we're using the FX4CR today. You'll see that the screen is going to look a little washed out on the FX4CR. It is not in real life. It is extremely, extremely, extremely sharp and bright. Just for some reason on camera, it doesn't come out that way. So we are currently on 20 meters. I am on 14.068. I'm gonna go ahead and change bands because I think this tuner is probably already tuned up for 20 meters. So let's go to, let's go to 30 meters. All right, so we're on 30 meters. Move up the band a little bit. I got somebody right there next to me. So I'm gonna listen for a minute, make sure we got a clear frequency. So while we're doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the tuner on. So all you do is press and hold the tune button. You'll see the tuner come on. Tells you the firmware version, 1.6. And then it says power and SWR, and it's got a little battery indicator. Now, here's the cool thing about the battery on this tuner. As you can see, if you look at this, you'll see that it's got one little sliver of battery use so far. I charged this tuner. So I've had this tuner about a year. I've charged it twice. I charged it once when I first got it. And then I charged it again before I took it out the first time this year. And it didn't really even need to be charged. I just topped it off. The battery in this thing lasts months and months and months and months and months. So if you're worried about battery life on these things, 
don't be. It lasts forever. And it is USB Type-C, so if you need to charge it in the field, you can use any old power bank and a Type-C you know, cable, and you're good to go. So I've got the radio in straight key mode. It says CW manual right there. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see this a little better. Oop, that's a little too much. So you'll see that I've got the radio in right here. It says CWM for CW manual. Okay. So let me zoom you back out so you can see the tuner. So all I'm going to do is I am going to key down, get the tuner in front of you. I'm just going to key down and the tuner is going to go ahead and tune this antenna up. So let me hit the key. 1.17 to 1, 5.2 watts, almost instantly. All right. So let's go ahead and go up to 20 meters. So we'll go. So now we're on 20 meters. So we're on 14.068. We'll do the same thing. We'll listen for a second. Make sure we got a clear frequency. Sounds like we do. So we'll go ahead and key down. 1.12, 5.2 watts out. I've got the radio set for five watts. So it tunes that fast. It's instantaneous. All right. So if you look at the radio, zoom you guys back in a little bit. You'll see the SWR right here. One to one, 4.7 watts out. Radio's happy, we're good to go. So it is that easy to tune the antenna with this little ATU-10, okay? And it's like I said, it's even easier on the 705 because it does it automatically. Now, here's another really interesting thing about this, this tuner, and this is something that's pretty cool. So right now, let me go ahead and turn it off. So we're gonna push and press and hold the tune button. You'll see it'll say power off. All right, tuner is now off, all right? Go ahead and zoom you guys way in on this screen. So if you look, I'm hoping this comes out. You're in the middle of the screen now, but sometimes when I zoom in this far, it doesn't work that way. If you look right here, it's going to show you SWR. Now keep in mind, the tuner is off. One to one still. All right. I'll zoom out to 2 oh just in case, because sometimes that doesn't come out real well when you're zoomed in that far. All right. One to one. So it's cool because this thing has latching relays in it. So it will stay tuned up. Even if I move a little bit down the band, so we'll go to like 66. Right, it's still tuned up. So it's it's cool because you don't you don't have to you don't have to worry about turning this thing back on to use it again. If you're still on the same band or roughly the same frequency, it'll work even off. All right. So that's a really cool feature of this little ATU 10. So let me go ahead and unplug my coax and get this ATU-10 out of here, and let's bring the ZM-2 over. So the ZM-2 is a Z-Match tuner. Uh, this works a little bit, well, this works quite a bit differently. So this uses variable capacitors, so we've got two knobs to change that. Uh, we have this switch right here where we can add capacitance if we need to. We've got a tune button, a tune and operate switch, so we use it, leave it and operate to operate. We switch it to tune to tune. This is our tune light. It's going to glow red while we're tuning. Here's our, rate, our coax to radio, coax to antenna. We can also hook ladder line up to this. You can also just use this with a random wire. You can just throw like speaker wire around these things and tighten it down, right? Loosen this guy up, wrap the wire around the post, tighten it down, and it'll tune. This thing will tune anything. I have tuned all sorts of weird random wires with this thing. I, have, I actually tuned a barbed wire fence with this once just to see if it would work, and it did. This, uh, would it radiate? You probably get a whole three electrons out of it, but it tuned it, all right? This will tune just about anything. Now, you may not get it a perfect one-to-one -one match, but it will be usable, all right? Now, um, we'll talk pros and cons here in a minute. Um, this does have some pros, and it has some pretty big cons. Uh, I said that the ATU-10 is about 125 bucks. If you buy this as a kit, I think it's about 80 or 90 if you buy it as a complete tuner, it's like 100, 100 120 bucks, something like that. You buy it from M-Tech. I will link this in the description as well. Um, I bought this as a complete tuner. I'm not really a kit builder guy. So let me go ahead and hook this tuner up, and I'll show you how this works. So we will throw our coax antenna on here. We can get it hooked up. Got an adapter on here to go down to BNC, and it's a little finicky sometimes. Hook our radio up. All right. Now, this is different. This is very different than the auto tuner. All right, so 
the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to leave the, the radio in straight key mode that makes life way easier, is I'm going to put this in AM. So it's real noisy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to watch my S meter. Now, if you got a radio that doesn't have an S meter, use your ears and listen to the noise floor. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn these knobs until my S meter reads as high as it, it'll read or until the noise floor is as high as it will go. So let me go ahead and start tuning these. So you can see it just dropped. I actually hear CW in there. So right about in there someplace is probably pretty close. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, I'll move you guys in a little bit so you can see the tuner a little better. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flip the switch to tune. I'm going to put the radio back in CW mode. And then I'm going to key down. And as I key down, I'm going to turn these knobs. And what I want to do is I want to put this red light out. Now when you put this in tune mode, there is a resistor bridge in here that the radio will always see one to one. As long as you're in tune mode, the radio is going to see one to one. So if you've got a radio that's got sensitive finals, this is a great tuner for this because it will it'll protect your radio. So I'm going to key down and then I'm going to turn these knobs until that light goes out or gets as dim as possible. It may not go completely out, but I want it as dim as I can get it. So I'm going to go ahead and key down. Right about there. That light is just about out. It just comes on a tiny bit. All right. So I'm going to flip this back to operate now. And now we'll come back over to the radio. Let's see what the SWR is. Oop. So let me zoom you guys in a little bit so you can see the screen. One point one to one, four point eight watts out. Okay. I don't know why that's not focused real well, but it's not. But that's okay. All right, 1.1 to 1, 4.8, 4.9 watts out. So we are good to go. All right, it is tuned up. We are golden. Now, that isn't that tough. All right, but it is more difficult than the auto tuner. The, the auto tuner is just hit the key, it tunes automatically, you're ready to roll. This takes a little more doing, right? You got to put it in AM first, get your noise floor high, switch it into tune mode, fine tune those knobs to get it to tune up correctly. But it's not really that difficult. Now, the first time you do it, it might take you a couple of minutes to get it all dialed in. And you're going to freak out because that light won't be all the way out. And you're like, oh, my God, it's not usable. I promise you, if that light's even remotely dim, you're going to be under two to one. It's going to be totally usable. If that light's on, but it's fairly dim, you're good to go. Like, if, So like I said, if you've got a radio that doesn't have an SWR meter, don't worry about it. I promise you, you'll, it'll, it'll be well within specs for the radio. You'll be fine. Now... Let me go ahead and kill the radio, unplug the coax, and let's talk about these two tuners. Let's talk a little bit about pros and cons. And then we'll talk about the elephant in the room, which is the Elecraft tuner. So, let's start with our auto tuner. Pros, it's super fast. Um, this thing tunes up almost instantly, and you're good to go. There's no knobs. There's none of that garbage. It's just hit the key, it tunes up, right? It is very small. If you look at how small it is compared to the ZM2, right? It is diminutive compared to the ZM2. It is very, very small. Now, oddly enough, the ZM2 is a little lighter. This has a metal housing. This is plastic. And this this ZM2 is basically a box full of air, which is kind of funny. But um, this is very, very small, and there's not a bunch of crap sticking off of it. You got a couple BNCs and a ground jack and a little power switch, and that's it. It's inexpensive. It's easy to use. Cons? Well, again, you got to make sure you get this from a reputable source, and it does use batteries, right? So if you're somebody who's worried about your battery dying, that's something to think about with this. Now, like I said, with this particular tuner, the battery lasts eons in this thing, so I wouldn't worry about it. But if you're somebody that that's a really big concern for you, that's something to think about. Now, the ZM2 is, and any Z-Match tuner, pros, no batteries, right? There, you don't need an external power source or an internal power source. You don't need a power source at all. This thing just works. Um, it will tune anything. I mean anything. 
right. Um, you can get to a point with that auto tuner where it's out of the range of that tuner and it won't get you an acceptable SWR. I've never had that happen with this. You get a funky wire length with that, that tuner. It might happen, that auto tuner. With this thing, it'll tune anything usable SWR. Like I said, it might not radiate. You might get nothing out of it, but the radio will be happy. Um, it's inexpensive, right? So these are about 100 bucks. Downsides, it's clunky, right? I mean, look at all the junk sticking off of this thing. We got switches and knobs and garbage everywhere, right? I mean, you don't just throw this in your pack. This has got to go in something else. You don't, you know, this thing, you can just chuck this in your pack. Now, usually it comes in a little plastic container. I, I usually stick it in a little case with a with my battery, my speaker and all that stuff. But you can just throw this, chuck this in your pack as is. It's not going to get hurt. This thing's a lot more fragile, right? So that's something to consider also. If you're somebody who's hard on your gear, you're going to need a case, a hard case for this thing. Uh, but at the end of the day, they're both excellent tuners. Now let's talk about the T1. The T1 is a fantastic tuner. Ellicraft makes amazing tuners. Their, their tuners will tune just about anything also. The downside with an Ellicraft tuner is the downside with everything Ellicraft, and that's you can't get it. And when you do get it, it is obscenely expensive. 125 bucks, 100 bucks. I don't even know what a T1 goes for these days, but you could buy multiples of these for a T1. And it's going to take you about a year to get a T1. All right, my buddy Eric bought one from Ellicraft and it took him a little over a year to get it. Now, it's, I'm not saying you shouldn't buy a T1. It's an excellent tuner. It's better than both of these probably. But it's very difficult to get and it's very expensive. All right, um, you're paying the Ellicraft tax. So for some people, that's worth it. For some people, it isn't. Like I said, their tuners are excellent. The one in the that KX2 will tune up just about anything. The only tuner I think that's better than the KX2 tuner is the tuner in the G90 because that thing will tune up. You could take a piece of string, dip it in the toilet, pull it out, and it would tune it up. All right, but at the end of the day, which one of these is right for you? You've got to make that decision. Are you somebody who wants it to tune real fast and simple? Or you want? are you somebody that wants to not have to deal with batteries and you want something that's going to be easy on your finals right um for me the answer was simple buy both and that may be the right answer for you also right so i use this most of the time but if i'm going someplace and i don't want to have to worry about batteries or i'm using one of my little qrp radios where those finals are a little sketchy whether when you got a high swr i use this guy all right everybody so I really do appreciate you watch, watching. I just wanted to give you a little bit of information about how those two tuners work so you can make a more informed decision if you're looking at buying a tuner, either one of these tuners or a tuner similar to these. So at any rate, everybody, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Until next time, as always, 7-3.